Welcome everybody and delighted that you're here. Uh, what a special event and what a special evening <clears throat> here at the State Department as we present the inaugural International Religious Freedom Awards. We've never presented this award before. We searched and scoured the world for the best people and the works that they've done on international religious freedom and our honorees are here tonight. We've just wrapped up two days of amazing meetings with a thousand, over a thousand civil society members and religious leaders gathered from around the world. We've heard powerful stories from survivors of religious persecution. We've done deep dives on the state of religious freedom in nearly every region of the world. And we've delved into the heart of what religious freedom is, an unalienable right inherent in the dignity of every unique soul. Most importantly, We've stood together and said we're not, we're not striving for a common theology, but a common human right. This isn't about a common theology. We are about this human right of religious freedom, and we're going to fight for it. And that's why I'm glad so many of you have joined us here from around the world, countries, delegations. Tonight, we're adding the foreign delegations to this overall meeting. We're thrilled, literally thrilled, to have you all here and I'm looking forward to a great day tomorrow of interventions and comments uh, and commitments from around the world. But first, I have the distinct privilege of introducing, uh, if I mind a bit of pride here, a fellow Kansan. Uh, there are not many of us in the world, and so we hang together. Uh, a friend and a fellow warrior for religious freedom. Please join me in welcoming Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Thank you, Ambassador Brownback. Good evening, everyone. For those of you just coming, there's room on this side and over here. <laughs> uh, uh, it is great to see you all. Uh, so many people gathering to advance religious freedom. Uh, I think Secretary Azar is here, too, from HHS, uh, another ally in this fight for religious freedom. Uh, I also want to extend a very special welcome to the faithful gathered here, to civil society and religious leaders, and to the foreign ministers and various heads of delegation who have joined us for this uh, great series of events here. Uh, thank you, too, for everything you've done to make these first two days so special and a success. You are all truly on the front lines of freedom. And by gathering here today, this evening, uh, you're making history. This is the second time we've done this here at the State Department. Uh, it is the largest human rights gathering ever at the State Department. Your, your presence here uh, underscores the fact that uh, faith matters, uh, that the right to worship, to assemble, to practice and to teach one's faith is undeniable, and that we have a responsibility as civilized people who care about freedom to protect it in every way that we can. We have our work cut out for us. You all know that. The people on this stage know this uh, better than I do. Uh, and you'll hear in many sessions at the ministerial this very thing. Uh, from the Islamic Republic of Iran to China to Cuba and beyond, uh, violations of religious freedom remain all too f common and all too far widespread. Uh, President Trump's administration has made the protection of unalienable rights like religious freedom a real priority. And I, I've talked about this in many settings and at length, and my colleagues have worked hard to put time and resources towards rallying our friends and partners to this important cause. We've decided that nothing short of an all-out, all-of-government effort is necessary. Two, we're working hard to inspire grassroots movements to push for change in every nation, every country in the world where religious freedom is being violated. More and more people are hearing that call. They're stepping up in their own communities around the world and saying that they, too, are ready to fight for this important freedom. I'm especially honored tonight to share the stage with the men and women who have demonstrated how much each one of us is capable of in advancing this noble shared cause. If the future of religious freedom rests on solid ground, it's because of people who are sharing the stage with me tonight. To, to say that each of them is brave is a gross understatement. To say their work is tough does not go nearly far enough. Each of them has a story a story which Ambassador Brambrock will tell us a little bit about in a moment. Each of them is known for their extraordinary advocacy efforts. They've risked their own reputation, their personal comfort, their own well-being, and in some cases, even their lives to help strangers, many of whom practice faiths that are different from their own. 
hailing from diverse countries, working as lawyers, working as diplomats, imams, directors of NGOs. They share a common mission to protect religious minorities and defend religious freedom and unalienable rights. I, I don't want to steal Ambassador Brownback's thunder. He has more to say about these extraordinary men and women, but I do want to emphasize one more thing about them. No one on this stage with me here tonight sought the spotlight. I could not be more humbled and honored to recognize their actions tonight with the first ever set of International Religious Freedom Awards. I hope, I hope that through these awards, we inspire others to do their part the world needs more ordinary citizens doing these remarkably extraordinary things. To all of our honorees, thank you for everything you've done. God bless you. And I'll now turn it back over to Ambassador Brownback. Thank you all. <clears throat> thank you, Secretary, uh, for those comments. We'll now recognize the awardees. First, we have Ivana Dos Santos. He's of Brazil, he's an activist, academic, faith leader, and founder of the Commission to Combat Religious Intolerance. In 2008, Ivanor spearheaded the first walk in defense of religious freedom in Rio de Janeiro, calling for an end to religious intolerance, the building of bridges, and the promotion of freedom and understanding. The walk became an annual event and now draws some 50,000 participants from diverse religious backgrounds, including Muslims, Jews, Christians, Buddhists, and atheists. Ivana's advocacy to protect the freedoms and rights of members of religious communities in Brazil are indicative of his lifelong commitment to this fundamental human right of religious freedom. Congratulations. Congratulations. Second, Salpi is Kingyan Waiderud of Cyprus. She works as a peace builder, serving as the executive director of the religious track of the Cyprus peace process. For nearly 30 years, Salpi has worked with faith-based institutions throughout Europe and the Middle East, promoting interfaith understanding. Similar to the makeup of our ministerial gatherings, she has worked with religious leaders and civil society groups to further religious freedom, conflict transformation, and peace building. Salpi has led international ecumenical delegations to countries throughout the Middle East, promoting human rights. Her creativity, leadership, and drive provides great hope for the future of her country. Congratulations. Next, we have William and Pascal Warda of Iraq. They can easily be named what we would call in America a power couple. Both William and Pascal have devoted their lives to advancing religious freedom and other human rights in Iraq. Pascal runs the Hamabre Human Rights Organization, a nonprofit the couple founded together in 2003 that monitors and reports on human rights violations in Iraq and provides humanitarian assistance following instances of violence. Their group, HHRO, was one of the first organizations to document ISIS atrocities against Yazidi and Christian women, girls, and members of other minorities. William serves as head of the Alliance of Iraqi Minority Networks. He's been active in helping preserve the historical identity of religious minorities throughout the following the rise of ISIS, ensuring his homeland does not lose its religious and ethnic diversity by working to preserve minority languages and heritage. The award is advocacy and leadership in advocating for the rights of religious minorities and of women throughout Iraq highlight their commitment to advancing religious freedom. Congratulations. Mohammed Yosef Abdullahan of Sudan is a human rights lawyer for the Sudanese Human Rights Initiative. Through both his legal casework and public advocacy, Mohammed has worked tirelessly to defend the rights of Sudanese religious minorities himself. Himself a member of Sudan's Muslim majority, Mohammed has time and again dedicated himself to helping religious minorities navigate the complex judicial system while leading and developing advocacy campaigns to end the government's targeted property confiscation. Mohammed's tireless defense of religious minorities in Sudan is evidence of his work as a true champion of religious freedom. Congratulations. <laughs> we have one other awardee who could not make it tonight, but I've just got to read you this about him, and I'm going to conclude with him. 
Imam Abukar Abdullah of Nigeria. While he couldn't be with us in person tonight, his story is truly remarkable, valor and selflessness, and it bears repeating. In June 2018, Fulani herdsmen launched coordinated attacks on 10 villages, killing hundreds of predominantly Christian farmers. As Imam Abdullah was finishing his midday prayers, he and his congregants heard gunshots. They went outside and found members of their town, their neighbors fleeing. Instinctively, the Imam gave refuge to his Christian neighbors, sheltering 262 Christians in his mosque and his home. Imam Abdullah then stood outside the doors confronting the Muslim attackers, pleading with them to spare the lives of the Christians inside, even offering to exchange his own life for theirs. Imam Abdullah's actions that day saved the lives of hundreds. His actions bear witness to true courage, true selflessness, and true brotherly love. So as we gather here at the Ministerial to Advance Religious Freedom, the heart of Imam Abdullah, story is at the heart of what we're after, each faith standing for the rights of others and of another faith, and of another faith's choice and chance to be able to do with their soul as they see fit. May each of us here and around the world enjoy the beauties of this unalienable right of religious freedom, and may we commit ourselves to its furtherance. Congratulations again to all the honorees. Thank you for joining us this evening. Our program's con concluded. God bless you all.